Have you ever wondered where the formula comes from for the area of a parallelogram? You probably know it's base times height, but why, right? Today, we're gonna explore just where that formula comes from. For this activity, you're gonna need a couple of things. You're gonna need something to write with. I have a trusty pencil and some pegboard paper. Um, the reason you're gonna do pegboard paper is because we're gonna be able to draw a parallelogram and cut it out. So that's the first thing I want you to do is to draw a parallelogram and cut it out. Now, before I go any further, let's just make sure we're on the pa same page when I say a parallelogram. I want it to look like a rectangle that you slanted or tilted, okay? Yours should look similar to this. Notice that on mine, the base of mine is one, two, three, four, five, six units long. And then I can see that it's gonna be some units tall. Before I get into the height, what I'd like you to do is cut it out. You should have drawn and cut out something that looks similar to mine. Now here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to think about how we could find the area of this shape. What about if we cut off this triangle and moved it to the other side? Would that give us a shape that you could more easily count the squares for? Let's give it a try. You can see that now that I've cut my triangle, and hopefully you've cut yours at home, if I've, I've cut this and moved it to the other side, now I can easily see that I can count the units on this rectangle, right? So if I'm thinking about this, I can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. My area for this parallelogram is 12 square units. Now let's think about what this has to do with the formula because realistically, we don't wanna to have to carry around pegboard and scissors every time we need to find the area of a parallelogram, right? There must be an easier way, there is. So notice that I have six units on the bottom and two units as I go straight up here, right? What do we call these? Well, I know that the bottom is sometimes called the base, and the thing is, is that this piece right here, remember, originally my parallelogram had this sort of tilted shape. Well, this is like a slant height, right? And that's really not what I'm doing. I'm not counting that. I'm really counting the actual height. So we would label this the height. So when I'm thinking about how to find the area for a parallelogram, I know that I can take the base times the height. So the area of a parallelogram is equal to base times height. Now you might be saying to me, wait a minute, I thought the area of a rectangle was length times width. Is length times width the same as base times height? It is, right? So sometimes we call this the length, sometimes we call this the width, it doesn't really matter. But the reason we're gonna use base times height is because it's going to be easier to think about this when we go on to our other shapes. Next up, let's look at the area of a triangle.